Welcome aboard Windover and uh, a virtual happy hour. Uh, today's guests are Jaina and Beef from Sailing Naughty Nook. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having us. It's great to be aboard your boat. Well, she looks beautiful. I want to say cheers to you both. And, uh, cheers to you uh, guys. Cheers. We should explain, too, that there were some technical difficulties. I think there's some uh, computer uh, issues that aren't allowing us to get the virtual background going, but that's fine. It's you guys we want to see anyway, so. Oh, thanks for understanding. Uh, good to be here with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice to have you both. Uh, first of all, we'd like to say congratulations and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, it was about yeah. to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. We've been Thank watching you. your videos. Well, you two are going to be married shortly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I don't know about shortly, especially after all this happening, you know, where <laughs> yeah. that might be on the back burner, but hey, I locked him down before the before the second, you know, event happened, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and the second event of course is you're about to have a child, so uh, congratulations yeah. and uh, exciting yeah. times ahead for you. It doesn't rain, it pours, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. When's the yeah. date? The due date's October 1st, so at this stage with what's going on, we don't know whether we're going to be having a baby on the boat in a hurricane here in Antigua or whether we'll be able to get back to Australia, and uh, that, that's the hope, but we just, we yeah, don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Now, we have to say, we've met you before, and it isn't just virtually either, that we were anchored in Leonard Key. I should have asked you if you remember where that was, but uh, I've let the cat out of the bag now. <laughs> We were anchored in Leonard Key in the Abacos, and Deb and I got up one morning, and there were these drone, this drone flying around us, and and you guys were uh, practicing with your new drone, I think. I think it was our buddy boat that thought that your boat was ours, and so they were circulating oh. your boat, which you know, if if you were from a different country, you mightn't have taken that so well, but you guys were friendly and happy to come flying over to tell us all yeah. yeah i do remember yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> i did fly over though but i asked you if you could film our boat which you did and we did use that yeah. in a subsequent episode which i'll i'll link to here actually uh where both our boats uh meet, right. meet up. Uh, yeah yeah so uh oh. so that that was yeah, uh, a long well. time ago a lot of water's gone under the bridge since then so true and i mean how we'll often the queue. how often in life do you fly a drone around someone else's home base and then you know end up having a virtual happy hour and keeping in touch ever after it it usually doesn't go down that way and that's what i love about the sailing community you just for sure yeah. you just meet people and befriend people in the most unlikely circumstances it's true yeah. yeah beautiful it's a the sailing community is small isn't it really oh we, we had a great time in the we had a great time in the Abacos. Uh, you folks, what did you do after we left you? That was the start of a big journey. Yeah. We basically ended up in Dominican Republic, but we Ooh. went through Turks and Caicos. We had our engine failed one time coming into a cart. We had all sorts of dramas. Nothing major, though. We got everything ran reasonably smoothly. I mean, you have your hiccups and things on the way, but in the big scheme, the boat didn't sink. We didn't get struck by lightning. We didn't hit a whale or a sunken container ship. Yes. And we got the boat safely to loop her on, hauled out, and then went back to Australia to work. So, yeah, it was good. Like, it, it, it affirmed to us that we can do this. And um, yeah. even though it's ha challenging and hard, if you wanted to buy a yacht and sail away, it's doable. It's doable for the average guy. And it's well, that, was your first, that was your first season, right? Yeah, yeah, we didn't know if we could do it. We'd never, we bought our boat. We'd never sold a boat like this size, especially not on our own. We had a couple of little lessons here and there back in Australia, but we basically bought a boat and then 
sailed off from Florida and it not really, never having been in a storm, never having... That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. We were real newbies and we still yeah, are we in still a lot are. of respects. But we, we had a big journey to Windward through Southeast Bahamas, but we just loved our time in the Bahamas and wish we could have spent longer there. I mean, mm. it's, it's such a special place. I'm sure you guys agree. And, and you were probably equally devastated by the Hurricane Dorian last year that mm -hmm. just went through all those beautiful places. All the yeah. places we'd been too, you know, we yeah. could, had a kind of a, a mental picture of what they used to look like. So yeah, exactly. No, it was exactly. A paradise. Yeah. We also feel fortunate that we went last year and not this year. Hmm. Or yeah, yeah, last year, yeah, and not this year. Very true. Our our buddy boat who was there in the Anchorage, they they're there now. They're in the Ragged Islands, but they the Bahamas doesn't sound so welcoming at this time, which is is really unfortunate. And mm -hmm. that's what we're really grateful to be in Antigua. They're pretty supportive, and they're not giving us a hard time. And things seem to be running pretty smoothly. So, are you on um Are you on anchor, or are you in a marina? Yes, we're at anchor. Yeah. We're on anchor. We yeah. never go to marinas. No. Yeah. 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 That, that gets expensive fast, doesn't it? Oh yeah. We are definitely it, the salty yeah. um, budget sailor. <laughs> and and it, we're on an ex we're on a budget which has run out a few weeks ago anyway. But that's a different <laughs> story. But we we're all about traveling the world for on the power of the wind and um and just doing it that way and, and anchoring for free in really nice places. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to afford to do it. And people might say, Oh, well, you're not contributing the economies, but we're still shopping there. We're still going on tours and we're still, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're still getting supplies from places and it's expensive. Like it's 30, 40 us dollars a night to have a, a place at a marina, which for us is like, oh my, our yeah. dollar is, is horseshit at the well, moment. You're, you're singing our song, man. Yeah, we found it yeah. so expensive. I mean, yeah. yeah, it was crazy. But our daughter, that's their mantra. They live very cheaply. They fish, yeah. you have gathers. Yeah. You know, well, you they, can't even fish everywhere these days. There's a lot of restrictions on fishing and, and rightfully so because the, the reefs around here have been pretty bad and there hasn't been a lot of fish in this end of the Caribbean. The Bahamas, yeah, it's sustainable fishing up there and spearfishing. Mm. relatively sustainable if you don't go get greedy but um yeah down here it's yeah the ocean life is by. not not much at all um it's pretty sad but yeah. i don't know where where some coral dies more coral might start growing further south who knows or for the north in this case south in the southern hemisphere yeah. that's one good thing about this whole pandemic at least mother nature is getting a big breast especially when it comes to reefs and fishing and things like that sure. so yeah. yeah i've been thinking the same thing too they've actually um they've um, they're not opening up even our boat ramps in ontario they're closed down people can't even back their fishing boats up into the ramps to get yeah. into the lake to fish yeah. wow. so nice yeah. to see positive it, things come out of this so, speaking of Canada, Jana, uh, you're from Canada. I sure am. I'm from a small town of Bradford, Ontario, about an hour north of Toronto. So I grew up there all my life, but then discovered that some people don't have to deal with eight months of winter every year. Yeah, actually, and I fell in love with yeah, New, yeah. New Zealand and Australia, so I've been living there the last 15 years. Wow. Canada's finest export. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, this is, uh, uh, with every single person we've interviewed, there's been some six points of separation. Now, obviously, we've met one another already, but uh, I grew up in Stainer, Ontario, which oh. you can ride your bicycle from Bradford almost. Uh, your your Barrie area, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, Stainer, Wasaga Beach. Yep. Hollywood, are you familiar with that area? Yeah. I sure am. I mean, Wasaga was our, our party place, you know, at the end of high school for after prom and all that sort of thing. Yeah. That's the yeah. hot spot. That's the, the beach hot spot. Yeah. If those walls could talk, <laughs> eh? <hey? laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't. What happens in that. Wasaga Beach stays in Wasaga Beach. And, that's right. Yeah, that's right, Debbie. <laughs> right. And and you guys, when we after we saw you guys headed north, and you guys have been on a pretty wild adventure yourselves. Yeah, we uh, we went uh, through the Abacos and uh, jumped off uh, out like West End area. How was that? And, and we went to uh, 
Here we go. Where we jumped off? Stewart, Florida area. We, I forget where we, where we ended up. Fort Pierce, Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce, yeah. yeah. And then we did the whole eastern seaboard back to Canada again. Yeah. Did he catch many fish? Uh, she did. I love fishing. It's one of my favorite things to do. But um, I lost, I think I lost a tuna and we lost a couple big fish. So the only thing that I really landed was a Spanish mackerel. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, yum is right. They're very oily yeah. fish and so easy to clean. And bluefish, right? lots of bluefish. And lots of bluefish. They're really, bluefish are really bloody, right? They, there's a lot of, as soon as you pull the hook out, they're, bleed, they're bleeding out on your deck. Yeah, I don't know much about no, that. No, I don't know about bluefish either. We get a lot of Spanish mackerel in Australia. They yeah. Might. Um, I don't know if they're the same, exactly the same species as here, but we get wahoo and mackerel in Australia. But over, it seems like to get wahoo here, you've got to be trawling like 12 or more knots, whereas in Australia, you'll get them less than that. Yeah. But they may be different, but we've only really caught mahi-mahi and the odd mutton snapper further north. Down here, the fishing, we've trawled lures every passage we've gone on, and we've had passages that have gone for 250 miles. And, and Barracuda. <laughs> Barracuda. Seaweed, yeah. seaweed, 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 seaweed. seaweed. Yeah. Well, Sorry. We were in uh, Cape May, and we went to Uches Marina there, where they have a little tackle store. That's in uh, the tip of Jersey, New Jersey. And uh, the guy there gave Deb a lure, a silver spoon, sold it to her, and he recommended it for the Eastern Seaboard. And as soon as we put that thing out, man. Hit after hit after, after hit. One after another, yeah, yeah. The lucky lure. You need to yeah. name that one by the sounds. Yeah. Know. Did we lose it before the end? Or? No, no, I still oh, have it. Still yeah. It. Yeah, every now and then you get a magic lure. Hey, I've had that a few times, and they just seem, I had a purple one in West Australia that, God, it was a beauty. And then when you <laughs> lose them finally, you're like, no, I was in yeah. tears when I lost purple. Yeah. Purple one. yeah. You should have bought two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why you always buy yeah. two, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, you don't we, always know. We went on board. Um, I was it what cup remember that couple we went on board? I thought it was the German flag, but the red, green, it was backwards. Do you remember that? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We ate um, sushi. They had caught a, a mahi. Oh, they're from Sweden. From Sweden, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we ate um, sashimi, sorry, sashimi, 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 sashimi. Yeah. And it was the mahi mahi. And we made up this uh, soy sauce with wasabi. And then we just ate it raw. Oh my gosh, it was, it was to die for. Yeah, amazing. You can't go back to buying fish once you've caught it fresh and eaten it because I mean it's just not nowhere near the same you're spoiled True. for life it's like diving on a really good healthy reef and nothing else compares after that yeah, yeah. And, it, and and the industry that goes in that goes into catching fish and they ship them to the supermarkets and they're on ice frozen and they some of them go off and I don't know it's good to just catch one eat it be really grateful for it and thankful for it and then not expect it for months because I was upset though because uh, on our way from the British Virgin Islands from Tortola to across the Anagata Passage to St. Martin, uh -huh. I highly suspected I was pregnant because I was throwing up all the time. I had to do my night watch with a bowl. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't take any coffee or tea or I couldn't keep anything down. And of course he caught a tuna, which you, you love to eat fresh, but I, I, like I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So I missed out. And I think that's the last fish mm. we've caught. No, no, I caught that Jack, um, that. Oh, the horse eye Jack the other day. Horse eye Jack. We did catch a fish the other day, trawling in between our two anchorages here in Antigua. We were luckily allowed to move anchorage. We had to get permission, but. Yeah. Yeah. And it was only a five mile passage and we got a little horse eye Jack, which mm. um, I ate and it was Pretty nice. I was unsure of the species, so I just didn't want to That's take true. her. So, so tell us about Don Quixote. Oh, she's um, she's she's everything right now to us. Like we haven't got a property at home in Australia. We haven't. It's all we've got, really. We saved up everything we had, and we bought her. And yeah, it's a lot more expensive than we thought, but we <laughs> we we were told that, and we did know that, but. Um, we, we love her. She's beautiful. She's a 1986 Morgan 43 foot center cockpit. And she's been loved. Center she's been loved all her life. The previous owner was a, is a wonderful man. We, we, we Skype him all the time and he's just, he, he loved this boat like a child and um, it shows. 
Yeah. Everything still is broken. I just don't know it yet. <laughs> um, Welcome to sailboats. Yeah. yeah, but I enjoy working on it. The more work I do on it, the more attached I get to it. Like I've been polishing stainless for the last like five days, just getting it detailed and bringing Amazing. it up to like, trying to bring it up to like how it was when it was new. Yeah. And we're locked down, right? So it's something constructive and it keeps you from going insane. But yeah, the more I do to her and the more I spend on it, the more, more I trust her and, and, um, and fall yeah. in love with her. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And She's I, a great I, bum. I hope she takes us all the way back to Australia safely through the South Pacific and beyond. And yeah, I just, I just hope I can give her enough love to, to keep her, to keep her good. Really. Nice. Sorry. Nice that you can share it too with the gentleman you bought the boat from. That must be very important to him and special. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's great. When we, when we speak to him, it's like, it's so sweet. Like, cause he's just, he loves hearing about what we're doing and where we are. And, and he's 85. His name is Dr. Jim and he yeah. had owned boats pretty much his whole life from when he was 16. I think he'd had three boats. And so he bought this from, you know, brand new at a boat show in Florida yeah. and had well, no, her, that, had her from, from he bought the model from a boat show, but he actually commissioned them to build it. So he was yeah. there when they laid, he was there when they laid the first fiberglass rovings on the stringers. Like he, wow. yeah. He's a wealth of knowledge and he's, he just is so great to us. And I think <laughs> it, yeah, it was really, it was just a time in his life where he needed to step back from sailing and, and he wanted his boat to go to a good home. And hopefully he's, he's, crowd and you know likes where where she's going we've been to all these different anchorages and we try and keep in touch as much as possible it's just he's part of this boat he's part of the fabric yeah. of the boat well, yeah we're doing a thrill for him yeah yeah and like when i'm when i'm looking after the boat i'm thinking yeah dr jim would be proud you know like he's <laughs> he when he watches the videos he's like oh i'm so glad you've taken good care of her you know and i'm just thrilled that you can look after her but yeah. yeah, it's it, not always fun, but uh, there, there is a strange enjoyment and satisfaction from making your boat perfect, you know? Yeah. It's never ending and it's like you can get really obsessive compulsive over it. Now, how far do you want to yeah. go into it? But, um, and it's, yeah, it's all nice. good if that's the only other woman. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She demands a lot. This temptress. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you're mentioning the videos now. Where? How did that all get started with you guys? You have a background. Oh, in that you know, I was so naive, and I knew La Vagabond was doing it. I thought, oh, there's such a market in there; it'll be easy, an easy way to make money. And so, so we you did this to make money. We were learning to sail and putting out videos, and I was learning to edit. I mean, it doesn't come naturally to me. I don't know how we did all this last year, but of course, we've never made a cent. And um, and we it's a never will. it's a labor of love, yeah. And but you know, it's, it gives us, it gives especially me something to do because he's real hands-on and i'm not so geared for that sort of thing i was all for it because i like it i like that you can have someone to look back on our little journey and our friends and family can see it and um our nephews and nieces and shout out to all our nephews and nieces back in Australia yeah. and beyond. well you've done a little bit better than that though i mean you've got a fair big following now Oh, thank you. That's really nice of you to say. I mean, we, I love your video. I think you guys are so clever, all with the plasticine. And, you know, I think your editing is really yeah. top notch. I could use, You're I can learn a lot from you for sure. You're setting the bar pretty high yeah, for the rest of us. Well. And a lot, there's a lot of cool channels out there, like Bums on a Boat. I, I love those guys. We met them in Looper on their awesome crew. And um, also Sailing GBU, Good, Bad and Ugly. We hung out with them a little bit in the Dominican Republic at when we're getting our boat ready at hurricane season and they're like they're two young couples both from different parts of the states and they're doing it they're doing it real they're, they've got older boats they bought for real cheap and they're they're just making it work and they're just yeah. doing whatever they have to do on a, on a shoestring budget to and they're putting out great videos both of them and and they kind of inspired yeah. us to step our game up a little bit lots of diy projects like you guys which you yeah. you can appreciate yeah. yeah um so we it was talking to boat, on a boat about doing this uh doing this as well maybe shoot them a little uh That's message tough. from us <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a good word in for you don't you yeah, worry yeah, yeah. <laughs>
sagging Flying in a circle, the power in his air We come from La Mancha, tribe of the earthling Swim through the madness, time to set sail Say our, our passion is just surfing and free diving and being underwater So that's really the kinds of stuff that we want to put out there You know, more sailing And, and right now it's, I guess, about the journey and where we are But when we get to places where we really can immerse ourselves underwater and um, that that's, I think when the, when the videos will really start to come alive. So. I, and I've really come to love the sailing. Like we'd never sailed before and learning to sail was just something we had to do in order to get the boat where we wanted to go. But I've kind of, in. I've caught, kind of fallen in love with the whole thing of it. Um, I've got so much to learn. We still haven't flown the spinnaker. Because we never go downwind. Yeah, we never go downwind. <laughs> we'll have to learn about that. We want to go across the South South Pacific, so we're going to need a pole for our Genoa, and we're going to have to get that fitted and work out how that all works. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've still got a lot to learn. We're still oh. very green in this game, for sure. Especially. You yeah. never stop learning. Yeah. Well, I, I think, think if you look after the basics, guys, which is, I know you have. I've watched what you're doing on the boat. If you just look after the basics, your boat will look after you. You can make a lot of mistakes. You know, it's pretty hard navigation wise to not hit Australia. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's there, you know, we'll get there eventually. so if you can get to the Bahamas, you can get to Australia. It's just all the currents and the weather and that those are the challenges really, you know? Yeah. 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 And you got to break it down into pieces, you know, you can't think of an end game or, or a long distance. It's, it's too much. It's too stressful. You just think about your, your next place, your next passage. And, and all of a sudden you're kind of mind blown of where you've come from. Like when I think back to 18 months ago, coming from Florida, never having been on a boat, just the two of us before, let alone a sailboat. What about we, my fishing boat? Oh, uh, a fishing boat, but it's not the same yeah. thing. Not you know? It was a 10 foot long. It was, and to, and to have made all those miles to Dominican Republic and then from Dominican Republic out here to Antigua. And if we hadn't have had to sit for a month, we'd probably be hauled out in Grenada and back in Australia already to, to make money. And so that, that's just, that's a huge accomplishment for us. We're, we, we, yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all pretty well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So if the COVID-19 thing hadn't kicked in, where would you be right now? Probably Grenada. Grenada. Yeah, our funds were running low even uh, before the world shut down. So we, we would have probably had to have hauled out and just got the boat secure for hurricane season and, and headed back. I mean, mm -hmm. if we can get six, work six months in Australia and get six months of sailing, we're doing really good. But yeah. we had engine issues that we needed to deal with in Luperon and in Dominican Republic. And even though the Dominican is very cheap for work, it still costs quite a bit. We had a bottom job and... And then we smashed our dinghy under a dock in some surf and saw that. in the British yeah. Virgin Islands. So, you know, these things happen. There's always, there's always costs. And I was kind of hoping that maybe I'd pick up a bit of work on our travels here and there, like maybe do some carpentry work in some of these places around the place or do work on other people's boats. But it's not really that easy to just rock up and, and find work you in leave, places. Could and, you barter for your work, though, if you want to do carpenter work and then kind of barter? So I'm sure. Sure. I don't see why not. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's one of the joys and things I look forward to most about this cruising life is being able to do that sustainably indefinitely. Like when you, yeah. we, we plan to spend a season in Tahiti, a season in Fiji, a season in Tonga, yeah. Solomon Islands, and it'd be good to be able to get somewhere, perch up for a while, get in with the community, do, even do some volunteer stuff for them, like rebuilding houses after hurricanes or whatever. Yep. And then even, it doesn't have to be paid work. And if you can focus on doing that sort of stuff, you feel good because you're giving back to a community and they're not going to pay you with money. They'll, they'll, they'll pay you with food and love and, yeah. and accommodation if you want. And they'll let you tie their boat up there. You know, it's, it's just, it yeah. still exists, you know, that sort of stuff. That's the dream. That's, that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Getting back to Australia will be kind of sad because it'll be the end of the South Pacific. <laughs> but, yeah. um, I'm not going to rush it. Yeah, we want to we want to spend a lot of time, maybe five years, even getting from the South Pacific back to Australia. But so, who knows? It's all well and good to say this now, but we're going to have a, an extra crew member in a few months' time. So, well, I'm looking forward to when they know. are an extra crew member, and I can get more sleep on passages and things. But that's probably uh -huh. at least ten years down the track. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, where four. where about are you guys now? Did you did I hear Belleville? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, you are okay. 
But I'm from Manitoulin Island. Do you know, have you heard of that? Yes, the Chichimon Ferry. That's where I fell Aww. in love with water. Well, our pa my parents took Say us on a, the Chichimon. <laughs> And we, 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 I've got a photo of us with all our big life jackets going on the Chichi Man. And I remember that's my first memory of water. I remember, I think, looking over the bow and just being hypnotized by the movement, continuous movement of water. And I think it is. Yeah. I did want to mention, too, uh, uh, if you are looking for work, we knew a guy that would travel around the world and he was a mason. So similar to a carpenter. He was know, amazing. Because, it's a, I can be amazing too. Well, there you go. But this is how he got his work. So he'd walk into a job site and he'd take the marker and he'd write on the wall, uh, I'm a great carpenter. Uh, here's my phone number. <laughs> and he'd just write it on the wall in the construction site. Wow. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And he got work all I, over the world. Yeah. I, I didn't know if those guys were legit. It was like the, you see the writing on the, the toilet, public toilet walls with guys' phone <laughs> no, numbers on it. Kind of like that. <laughs> That's I don't know if I want to be writing my phone For a good time call, no, you don't put that down. <laughs> you never know on some building sites. <laughs> yeah, give her a try anyway. But that's a well, good idea, you know. Yeah, the pen's ready to go. I'm actually, yeah. It's yeah. getting to the point where we're going to have to start doing that. Good, good. Yeah. Listen, we do want to thank you guys for joining us. It's been really fun yeah. talking with you. Awesome. And uh, nice to see you again, I guess. Yeah, likewise. It's and uh, we'll be watching uh, to see how things go with uh, your current situation. And uh, we're looking forward to the <laughs> wedding. Uh, hope you can send us a cigar. And that new baby, yeah. for sure. Yes, yes. Baby priority number one. Wedding yeah. definitely will happen, but mm -hmm. when the time's right. Yeah. When, when uh, you all yeah, get thanks. down to Canada, you can, you're always welcome, okay? I oh, love Canada. That's great. All my snowboarding gear is in Jana's auntie and uncle's place in Vancouver and I just want to get I want to go snowboarding in Canada again and hang out with all the family over there because yeah. yeah you missed the season I love Canada hopefully it's warming up a little bit for you guys because yeah. I mean boat yards are tough at the best of times but in those kind of conditions oh it looked pretty brutal we've been yeah. locked out of our um out of the marina yeah. all of them are everybody's locked out shut Every, down. yeah shut down wow. non-essential yeah. businesses so I think so, Chris is going to start climbing the fence very shortly to get in. <laughs> Literally <laughs> and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. So Aww. thank you very much, guys. And we really, really appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of us. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Adios. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye. I know it was all that like, we, we never get to eat this stuff at this yeah. time of day it's you know just party mix and how good is it <laughs>